In this video, I'm going to talk about 10 things that you shouldn't do as a pastor's wife. Being a pastor's wife can be very difficult at times, but I'm here to help you on your journey of being a pastor's wife and to try to make it easier for you. Some of the things that I'm going to share in this video is things that I have seen other pastor's wives do and even some mistakes that I even made as a new pastor's wife. The things that I'm going to share in this video is beneficial for a new pastor's wife or a Christian woman in ministry. One of the worst mistakes that you can make as a pastor's wife is to share your personal business with members. God has a order when it comes to leadership and by you being a leader, they supposed to come to you for advice. You don't want to go to them for advice. When you do it like that, it's just mess up the order of things the way they should go. You are their mentor not the other way around. So if you have an issues in your marriage or something personal thing that you are struggling with, instead of talking about it to a member, you need to find you a mentor, someone that you can trust. And it's different if you have struggled with a particular thing and you're overcoming it. And so you want to use your story as a testimony. That's different, but you have to make sure still even if you're using your struggle as a testimony that is something appropriate, that's not going to damage your relationship with your husband or make people look at you differently in a negative way. Another thing that you don't want to do, and it can start a huge confusion in, in the church, if you share another member's business with other members, the same way if you went to a psychiatrist or a counselor, even a priest, whatever people tell them, they have to keep it to their self. It's confidential. And even in the church, even if, if the member decides to leave the church, you still don't have the freedom to tell their business. Whatever it is that you know, you have to keep it confidential because you never want it to be said that the pastor's wife said such and such. That can start a huge confusion and people are going to feel that they can't trust you. By you being a pastor's wife, you're going to know a lot of people's business and a lot of things that he is going to tell you about because from the fact that you're his wife and so he's going to feel comfortable just talking to you. But just because he's telling you certain things and even if he don't even say don't tell anybody, certain things you're going to have to learn on your own and to know what to tell and what not to tell. And I would say what helped me is that if you're not going to say a particular thing in front of that person's face. You have to learn not to say it when they're not around as well because you know that it's rude. So as a pastor's wife, you're going to have to learn to be slow to speak, to listen more than you talk. Be careful about what you say. And I can say this, there have been a couple of times in my life to where I was getting ready to talk about something that I shouldn't talk about. And even though I wasn't trying to do it in a negative way, but God would always intervene and then I I would stop. For example, he would have someone just to walk up or someone just to call me on my cell phone so that would interrupt the conversation. And once that interruption happened, then I would always think about, okay, God want you to be quiet. Don't say another word about it. Tip number three kind of goes along with tip number two. Don't be a confusion starter. It's easy to be a confusion starter and you don't even realize it. So, and most of the time, how the way that you can easily be a confusion starter if you tell someone something that you shouldn't have told them, something that's personal and they go back and tell another sister in the church and then it gets it back around to that person. So you have to be careful about what you say. Certain things you won't be able to talk about to nobody but your husband. And another way of being a confusion starter, if you have a hard time with getting along with people, just because you are the pastor's wife, you can't just treat people any kind of way. You're going to have to learn how to get along with people. As a pastor's wife, you want to make sure that you are a assess to your husband and not a liability. You want to make sure that you are adding to the ministry and not taking away. So you don't want to be a type woman to wear you being aggressive with members. You feel that you can just talk to them any kind of way. Things like that takes away from the ministry and it makes it hard for members to enjoy your company. So whenever gossip goes around the church, that your name is not in the middle of it, that no one can say that first lady said such and such. 
Now, this is a big no-no. When you get upset with your husband, and it's going to happen on days that you have to go to church sometime, you're going to have to learn how to cut it off and don't bring it to church with you because... It's just not a good thing to do, and God is not pleased with that. So what I try to do to prevent any type of ill feelings to my husband on church days, certain conversations I don't bring up. And I try to make sure that whatever it is that we're talking about, something positive, church-related, that's not the time to talk about any type of conflict that you have or something that you're mad at him about on a church day because that's going to interrupt both of you guys' spirit. And one thing that you have to understand as a pastor's wife is that people are watching you and that could be a good or a bad thing because a good part about them watching you is that if you're mad manifesting positive behavior, then they're going to change for the better. But if you are being disrespectful to your husband, especially in public, it can easily cause the wives to do the same things to their husbands. And you don't only want to respect your husband in the public, but first you have to do it at home because it's not something that you can just turn on and turn off. It's something that you can't just fake. So you have to work on that at home. Now, this is something that I see a lot of pastors' wives do, and these are ones that even have been in the ministry for a long time. It's easy when you have a small church to feel like that you have to do everything. And when my husband and I first started the ministry, I had to do some things, but I tried to make sure that things that I did in the church was things that I was qualified to do. Or if I wasn't qualified to do, I only did it temporarily as soon as someone joined the church that had the ability to do something that I was doing better than I can, I will always hand it over unto that person and then move on to the next thing. So you don't want to feel like that just because you are the pastor's wife, that you can do everything and that you have all the spiritual gifts because it's just not possible. So you want to learn to stay in your lane. If you're not a speaker, if you can't preach, don't try to preach. If you can't sing, don't try to sing. If you can't play the keyboard, it's okay. Hire someone to do that for you. You have to learn that as God is increasing your ministry, you have different people coming in there that all they have the talent to do a particular thing that you are already doing. So don't take it personal. You want to allow the best to do the best. <laughs> you want to allow someone that's gifted or better at something do the job and don't take it personal. That is one way of your church growing is by just stepping back and handing over the responsibility to someone else that can do it better than you can. Now, this tip I'm getting ready to share with you, I wish someone would have shared it with me when I first became a pastor's wife. Keep your home private. Your home is not the church. And yes, I do know that um, pastor's wife is supposed to be friendly and it's okay every now and then if you feel to invite someone over to your house for dinner, that's fine. But that's something that you don't need to do on a regular basis. And I say that for different reasons. For one of the reasons is that when you're in ministry, the church does take over your life and the majority of everything that you do, every event that you have going to have to do with ministry. Your home should be a place of rest, a place of escape for your husband and also if you have kids for your children too. So, and that even go back to when what I was talking about earlier about being careful about your circle, who you hang around, who, who you let in your life. So you do want to keep your home private. Just because you are married to a pastor, it doesn't mean that you have to open up your house and people just can come by whenever they want to. There is a such thing of space. You're going to need that personal space. Your family is going to need the personal space. I'm very self-conscious about who my friend is because one thing I had to realize when I became a pastor's wife is that just because people are nice to you and they act like that they like you, 
Everyone doesn't have a pure heart. Some people have negative motives. So I had to learn that everyone isn't my friend. That is one of the biggest struggles that I still have now is finding friendship because you just have to be very careful about who you hang around. It's okay to be friendly with the women at the church because they are your sisters in Christ, but you still don't need to get it mixed up as a friendship because every member or every lady that goes to your church, they are not your friend. Use discernment and keep your circle small. Don't despise the church. Now, there was a season in my life to where I actually despised the church. No one didn't know it because I'm good at hiding the way that I feel when I'm around people. But there were a time to where I did despise the church. And the reason why I despised the church is because I felt that they were taking my husband away from me. And I felt like he was more concerned about them and their needs then he was concerned about mine but I don't feel like that now and the reason why is your church is a business and in order for you to be able to have a church and to run it properly you're gonna have to have money in order to have money you're gonna have to have members and I realized that it's my husband's job to counsel the members when they need him and I understand that in ministry a lot of pastors have a problem with time management so you have to have patience with your spouse and pray that he will learn how to balance his life and balance his responsibility. So I had to change my thinking and I had to understand that one of the main parts of my husband's job is to be available to the members when they need him. And not only that, I had to realize that without the members, you won't have a church, you won't have an income. And also, I had to realize that my husband and I, we are a team and we work together. But what helped me is I didn't realize it then, but later I learned that the church needs me more than I think. You are the backbone of the church. So you have to make sure that you have the right mindset and the right attitude. Don't get caught up in the glamour of the title of being a pastor's wife. It's easily done, and I see a lot of pastor's wives that does it. Being a pastor's wife is so much more than looking good, wearing nice clothes, toting designer purses, and wearing designer shoes. If you focus on the wrong thing as a pastor's wife, you will become vulnerable and it would be very easy for the enemy just to walk in and to set traps for you and you fail. So the main thing that you want to focus on of, as of being a pastor's wife is you want to make sure that you are rooted and grounded in Christ, that you have a good relationship with him, that you put on the whole armor of God so that you will be able to stand the tricks of the enemy in a regular marriage you are going to gonna have seasons to where you're gonna go through some difficult things but as a pastor's wife is so much more constantly you're gonna have the enemy try to set traps for you try to set traps for your husband and even your children too so you have to be watchful and to make sure that you have the word of god inside of you and that you stay prayerful because the closer you are to God, the more he's going to talk to you and you will be able to recognize his voice. And when he warned you about a particular thing, a particular person, things to be watchful for and how you stay in tune with God, you have to spend time with him on a regular basis and you have to read your Bible and stay prayerful at all times. Tip number 10, be yourself. It took me a while in ministry just, just to learn to be myself, even when it comes to the way that I want to dress. To dress in a way that I like, that represents who I am, not someone else. I got so caught up in the gifts that i seen other pastors' wives have. For example, I don't preach. I have a fear of public speaking. And so just because that I wasn't good in those two areas, 
I look down on myself and not looking at the gifts that God had given me. For example, I play the keyboard, I sing. I'm good at encouraging others. I can easily see something in, in someone else that they haven't even recognized about their self. So I'm really good at exhorting others. What I want to say to you is that all pastors' wives are not the same and God made us different. He made us different because people are different. There are certain people that you are going to be able to impact, encourage, mentor, there's a certain type of woman that's going to admire you and it's only because of you being yourself and you doing the gifts that God has given you. And one thing I love about ministry is that you can't put everything inside of a box and it's not one gift that's better than the next. So if you're not good at doing things in the public, it doesn't mean that you are less than. The main thing that you want to do is to be yourself and to and nurture the gifts that God has given you and to know that you are valuable. There's a work that God has for you to do and no one can do it but you. If you take heed to the things that I say, you won't have to go through a lot of unnecessary things that a lot of pastor's wives go through. If you are a pastor's wife or if you desire to be a pastor's wife, please put it in the comments below. If it's a particular tip that I gave that stood out to you, share in the comments which tip that you like the best and why. And if you are a pastor's wife or a leader, I may not have talked about everything that you need to avoid as being a new pastor's wife. Please leave your advice in the comment section as well. If you enjoyed this video and you like my message and you just want to support me, subscribe to my YouTube channel and also click on the notification bell. Make sure you stay tuned for my next video. In my next video, I'm going to be talking about how to get your members to love and respect you as a pastor's wife. Thank you for tuning in. Bye.